Hello, I'm Chef Cody Middleton. I'm a certified executive pastry chef and chef instructor here to teach you about bread baking, something many folks probably started to do during the pandemic there. But maybe you fell out of baking bread, maybe something didn't go quite right, you lost some courage, and maybe you didn't continue with it. But I want you to stick with bread baking. It's such a fundamental technique that we do in pastry there, and anybody can do it at any skill level there. So bread's about four basic ingredients, flour, water, salt, and yeast and you combine those with time, temperature, and you add some technique, you've got some really delicious breads there. Studied here in America, also in France, I've run multiple country clubs, bake shops, and I wanna take all of my experience, and that way you can bake bread in your home kitchen as well. So it's been about 30 minutes, time to mix our dough. You can see our pre-ferments ready, and again, you're wanting it to about triple in size, and if you don't have a graduated container like a measuring cup, what you look for is just some bubbles on top. It started to ever so slightly sink in the center, and when you tap it here, you can see that those bubbles start to deflate slowly. That's how you know your pre-ferment is ready for this bread. So I'm gonna put that first into our bowl here. Use our spatula. Help scoop it out and again it kind of looks like oatmeal consistency that's what you're looking for here and again with those potato flakes it's going to give us an amazing flavor it's going to give us really nice fluffy roll as well so we're going to try to get all of that out also because it has our yeast we want maximum leavening power here as well so that looks good with us here i'm going to add that in our bowl and then Anytime I'm mixing a dough, I like to add my liquids first. That's gonna give us somewhere for our flour to dissolve. If you put the flour first, sometimes you get little patches of flour. So milk goes in. This is temperature to milk. Um, in the industry and in professional kitchens, we really like to calculate our temperature. That way we have a predictable fermentation time so we don't have backup when we're baking our bread here. Um, if you're only baking one bread at home, it's not a big deal at all. You just wanna have this one about 55 to 60 degree temperature milk there, and that'll be just fine here. So milk goes in, our starter goes in, I have my oil that I'm gonna throw in as well. And then we're gonna add our flour last. And I'm gonna hold off on two ingredients, our sugar here and our salt. We're gonna add those a little bit later. So flour goes in here, and again, I want to try to get it all in the bowl. A little bit that spills out isn't a problem at all. So this will go on our mixer here. And then anytime you're mixing a bread dough, you want to use the dough hook attachment. Even if you've had success with the paddle, it just really wears down the mixer here. And this is a rather stiff dough. So we want to use the dough hook attachment here. So this one we'll put on. And then we're going to start this on low speed. Anytime you're mixing a bread, you always want to start on a low speed first. If you start on high speed, number one, you're going to get a face full of flour, and nobody really wants that. Um, and also, it's really important to evenly mix in our ingredients at first. So, you want to start on a low speed, and that's different for everybody's mixer. For one mixer, it might be three minutes, for another mixer, it might take four minutes. So, what you're looking for is just for all of these ingredients to come together into a mass, and it's going to be shaggy. Um, and that's okay, but just give it patience until the flour gets totally incorporated into our dough. You don't want to go on a higher speed there. So we're just going to let this mix and then we'll add our other ingredients. It's been about three minutes. Our dough has just come together here. If you look at it, it's kind of a shaggy mess and it's not really got strength. We can pull it apart pretty easily. With bread dough, we are wanting to develop that gluten, and that's gonna give us a nice chew. It's gonna give us a nice volume as well. But for this stage, this is where we wanna be. All of our flour is completely incorporated here. And at this stage, what we call the cleanup stage, this is a very vital stage. We wanna fill our dough here. And if you're not here with me, it kind of feels like a memory foam pillow there. That's the consistency you want to work with here. If your dough feels a little bit soft, maybe a tablespoon of flour can be added. If it feels very dry, which can happen, especially in the winter, add a tablespoon of water there. Mix it until that's incorporated and then fill it again. But you only want to make minute adjustments here. It should be rather close, but every flour is a little bit different. Everybody's kitchen is a little bit different as well. But you want to give it a fill. See that it's nice and smooth smooth there and again that memory foam mattress that's what we're looking for here so it's been about three minutes now we're ready to move up 
to second speed here. So we're gonna kick it back a little bit higher as well. And this is where we're starting to develop our gluten and that's gonna be structured. So it's gonna make our dough really nice and smooth. So let's talk a little bit about why we held back on these two ingredients. So number one, our salt is going to compete with the flour for moisture. So it's gonna take longer to develop. You can absolutely add it at the beginning, but it's gonna take a little bit longer to develop the dough. And the sugar is a tenderizing ingredient. So it's gonna make the dough, again, take longer to develop. So if we hold back adding it, get a little bit of structure with our dough, then we can add these ingredients there. And it just takes a little bit less time to mix. Again, if you add them for the beginning, no harm done. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. And sometimes you might see it start to come up the side of the bowl quite all right. All you gotta do, just push it back down there. And you'll see when we add these other ingredients, it's gonna stay in place a little bit easier. So we're just gonna mix this dough again, another two to three minutes and the dough is gonna become smoother. And that's when we know we're ready to add these other two ingredients. been about another three minutes on second speed and we're starting to get some more gluten development here so I just want to take the dough out show you the difference here with this it's not quite ready for us but we can definitely see some progress with our dough you can see it's starting to smooth out and that's a good sign that the gluten's development here and then when I try to pull you can see there's some resistance and that's how we know we're ready to proceed with our other ingredients so put my salt in first again if you want to add it from the beginning that'll work just fine just takes a little bit longer for the gluten to develop for a serum so back on the mixer here and then we'll mix this on first speed to incorporate it there and then we'll go on second speed to continue to develop our gluten so first speed just like with our cream cheese frosting we don't want to splatter a lot of everything there that we're going to make here in a little bit um, don't want our salt to come up with us there so same idea with this just going to let that incorporate as well um, and I like to bake with either kosher or sea salt you want to avoid something like iodized salt because that has somewhat of a metallic -y flavor and with bread it's only a few ingredients here so we want to use all quality ingredients all the way down to our salt there. So dough's coming together here. And again, it's gonna be a kind of stiff dough, not like a bagel dough if you've ever made it like that, but not like a focaccia dough, which is one of my favorites to bake, which is really nice and loose. So salt is in, it's incorporated. So now we can go with our sugar. And again, this is gonna tenderize our dough. So we're gonna add this in about thirds. So you'll see with each addition, the dough's probably gonna break, but then it'll come back together. And when it does, that's when we can proceed with the next addition. So about a third of our sugar goes in, start it on low speed, and then we'll go with the second addition there. Again, if you add it from the beginning, it'll definitely work out for you. It's just gonna take a little bit longer for the dough to get that full development there. So especially if you're mixing by hand, you want to be sure that you hold off adding the sugar there. So dough's coming together. Again, you can see parts of the dough are breaking off. And again, we want to wait till it comes back together into a, a smooth mass, and then it'll be ready for that next addition there. So it doesn't take long. We're going to give it about one more minute, and then we're going to add that second addition. After we added that last addition of sugar, we moved it up to a medium speed, and that took about an additional 10 minutes altogether of mixing there. So with bread, it's all about patience there in the mixing and the rising, because that's all gonna give us a really great product. So looks like our dough is ready here. We'll check it. What we're looking for is a pretty smooth dough here. It's gonna be a little bit tacky once we added that sugar, but we're just gonna take it off the mixer and especially if you're mixing by hand, be patient with this step here. So it's a little bit tacky. Again, that's what the sugar does with it there. So what I'm gonna do, just a little bit of encouragement with my bowl scraper, um, but no flour on the table, especially if you're mixing by hand. You wanna be sure not to add any flour at this stage there because it's gonna dry out the dough. So it's gotten a little bit smoother, and especially if you're mixing by hand, a good way to knead it is just to slap it down and fold it over there little bit easier than kneading the conventional way of just pushing into the dough like that that can hurt your wrist so I just like to use gravity 
flip it over and you can see it's gotten a little bit smoother since we last revisited and that's what we're looking for this nice smooth surface on our dough another good thing that you can do to test is what we call a gluten window here so one sign that it's ready to be done mixing is how it looks another one is that gluten window so for that we're going to take about a golf ball size portion of dough and when i do this i like just a little bit of flour on my finger so it doesn't stick and we're going to gently kind of pull it back and forth there so when you're doing this very gently just kind of wiggle it in one direction give it a quarter turn wiggle it again and we're just ever so slightly extending this dough and we know it's ready to mix when we can form almost like a window here so we can see it's a little bit shaggy here it's breaking a little bit so just a couple slaps and we should get a smoother dough and it doesn't take much once it's got this much development so just a little bit more kneading here and you can already see it smooth out a little bit more for us here. so again we'll just test it one more time use the residual flour on my hands and again just gentle tugging back and forth give it a quarter a turn back and forth here i can feel that the dough is a little bit less sticky and that's what we expect with this as well so when we're pulling this we're not mixing it all the way till it's completely smooth but we want to be able to see where if we had like light come through it and we can see my finger come through it if it breaks you want it to break cleanly like this if it's rugged and like a little wavy it needs a little bit more time so I'm just going to bring this back into a ball when i do this i kind of cup it so bring it towards me give it a quarter turn and then pull it towards me so quarter turn pull the dough towards me there and when i'm doing this the palms or excuse me the bottom of my hand is actually on the bench so we'll pull like that and tighten this membrane so quarter turn and then pull and the bottom of my hand again is just on the table just to give it a nice smooth surface so got a nice smooth ball of dough here and we'll just put it in our pan with a little bit of pan spray here in our bowl and that way it doesn't stick we'll place it in here cover it with a plastic wrap so it doesn't dry out and then we'll give it about an hour and a half or so till it doubles in size and that's when we know it's done fermenting there i like to put the time of when i start fermentation on my plastic wrap when i do that just so i remember how long it's been going there so i'll do that let it sit and then we'll revisit it in about an hour and a half and then we'll divide our dough it's been about an hour and a half since we put our pan loaf ready to proof so we can see it's about doubled in size and it's filled out our pan we're actually going to score this which is just a fancy way to say cut our loaf so when we're at this stage what we're looking for is again it's a little bit less than doubled and then when we press it with our finger it starts to come back slowly if it just holds an indent and sometimes it sounds like a whoosh, sound on your dough um, it means it's a little bit overproof so you wouldn't want to score it at this point but you can see the loaf is kind of breathing it's coming back to life and that's how we know we're at a good spot to score so we've got a couple options when it comes to scoring you can use the french lame spelled l-a-m-e um, it's really great for baguettes batards bulls those classic european french loaves there um, or what most everybody has around is the serrated knife and that works really easily as well and when you're scoring you want to be quick and confident in it there because if you're slow and if you're afraid the dough knows it and it's going to want to glue itself to your knife so we just want to make a quick incision here kind of like a paper cut in a way we're going to cut it about a quarter of an inch deep all the way across the length of our bread so find the middle this one we're just going to keep the nice nice and straight we're just going to start from one end and then cut it all the way until the other end there if for some reason you didn't get about that quarter inch mark you can always go back and score it again you don't have one shot um, here you can see again our dough is just kind of breathing if you see it start to deflate at this point you want to get that bad boy in the oven as quick as possible there um, if you see it kind of like pushes up on you and says hey i still need more time to proof give it another 10 minutes there but just with the proofing again just wanted to kind of breathe and it's proved that it's a living organism and that it's going through that lovely doubling stage there so we're going to bake this one about 275 or excuse me we're going to bake this one 
about 350 Fahrenheit there. And we're looking for a nice rich golden brown color there. It might take a little bit of aluminum foil tint or covering on top, depending on your oven there. So after about 15 minutes, look at the dough. If it's getting already brown, either cover it with aluminum foil or just reduce your oven temperature by about 25 to 50 degrees there. And it's gonna take about 30 to 35 minutes of total baking time. So our cinnamon roll dough is all the way rolled out there. Again, our gluten is kind of like a rubber band or think about your muscles when you go to the gym. If you work them a little bit, they get a little bit tight the next day. Same with our gluten. So if it really wants to fight you while you're rolling it out, just let it relax again another 10 minutes and then work it again. Or if it gets really hot on you, especially if you're working in like Florida or in the South during the summer, it can get hot. So if it gets a little bit tacky or sticky and it seems unmanageable, throw it in the freezer for 10 minutes just to firm everything back up there. So again, we're about 18 by 15 inches there and i like to go kind of wide here because the wider you are the more spirals you're going to get when you're rolling your cinnamon buns there and that's really what i like in a cinnamon roll there so again it's a rough rectangle if one of the corners is a little bit stubborn what you can do is just kind of give it a gentle tug just to ensure that it's pretty nice and squared off on the corners there so i've got a little bit of water here and i'm just gonna brush lightly on our dough here and this is going to make our cinnamon sugar adhere to our dough here and if you wanted to change this up you could use a little orange juice if you have like a little bit of rum you could use that as well any kind of flavor you want to add would be just fine for this but just a light coating just to moisten it up ever so slightly so not a lot at all so then we're going to go with our cinnamon sugar here and pretty good amount with it just kind of let it rain on the top there. And again, you're gonna have extra, but I always like to have this on hand at all times. The only thing you wanna be careful at this stage is just this bottom lip. You wanna leave no cinnamon sugar. About an inch, half an inch is just fine there. And that's gonna be where we roll it up. So pretty good amount of cinnamon sugar. Once I don't see any more dough, I'm just gonna take my hand. I'm just gonna kind of flatten it out. Make sure it goes to the corner here on the sides and we'll be just where we wanna be here. So just flatten it out, get it all over here. And that's looking pretty good. If you get any bare spots, just go cover it back up. It's not the end of the world here. Again, we're gonna get just a little closer to this bottom edge there. So a good amount of cinnamon sugar. This is probably about an eighth of an inch there. You don't wanna to go too thick where when you roll it up, you're gonna have little clumps that just kind of fall off when you roll it. So this looks pretty good. We've got cinnamon sugar on our left hand side, cinnamon sugar on the right hand side there. So now it's time to roll again. We've got this bottom lip with nothing on it. If you accidentally cover it, it's just not gonna seal our dough quite as well and they might pop open there as well. If you want to, you can leave the upper edge with no cinnamon sugar there. But when I roll it towards me, it's a lot less moving than I need to do when I go to cut it. So that's why I always like to leave this edge towards me with no sugar. So just gonna roll it up like a jelly roll. Just use your fingers, kind of roll it up. And the first little bit's always the hardest. And kind of like with our bread dough, you wanna tuck it in just a little bit, just to make sure that it's going to stay in place. So then I just take my hands and kind of roll the dough. Don't have to worry about it being too tight here. Just want it to come together. If you feel it gets a little bit loose, you'll know when you cut it there, it'll just kind of fall apart a little bit. So if you have to take your thumbs, kind of push it back in, that's quite all right there. So just gonna roll it up here to the end. And you wanna to try to keep it nice and square for it. Yeah, it's gonna make your life a little bit easier there. So this looks great again, because I've rolled it here, that seam is gonna seal. So I'm just gonna push down ever so slightly there. Favorite tool in the bake shop here, bench scraper. So any cinnamon sugar here, just get out of the way so it's not messy at all. So now it's time to cut it. This makes about nine cinnamon rolls here and they're about two inches thick. Here we've got what we call a bicycle or accordion cutter here. If you don't have this, you can just use a ruler and mark it out, but this works really quickly for us here. So this is gonna do a mark here every so often this should give us nine so we can count one two three four five six seven eight nine and we know that we measured it right if for some reason it's a little bit short you can just roll it out like you're rolling another bread dough there so this is where we want to be here nice cylindrical it's pretty even and again we've got cinnamon sugar on both sides so we've got plenty of flavor in each bite here so we'll bring out our prepared pan 
that we have on standby. We're just gonna line this three by three. So I like to use a nice serrated knife for this. It works really easy. We're just gonna do a sawing motion with our cinnamon rolls back and forth here. And you can see that we've got a really nice spiral with our roll and that's what we like here. It's all about the spiral with the cinnamon rolls. Just gonna cut it gently back and forth. And again, if this starts to fall apart on you there, quite all right, throw it in the freezer 10, 15 minutes and go back and cut it again. A nice serrated knife is really invaluable for bread baking here. Um, you could also use uh, butcher's twine, unflavored floss here. Um, save the mint flavored one for your bathroom when you're brushing your teeth, not for cinnamon rolls here. So now we're just gonna put them in the pan. So because it's stuck here on the corners, it's not going anywhere. If you forgot to seal it, what you could do is just kind of unroll it and then tuck it underneath like that. And that'll be sure it doesn't go anywhere. But these are looking pretty well sealed here. And again, we've got that beautiful spiral. So we're gonna go three by three on the sheet pan and that's gonna allow them to rise really nice and high. We've got some that are just a hair smaller. I put that one in the middle there. So three by three, and this is looking pretty good for us there. So just space it out. And what I like to do with my cinnamon rolls, these are two inches wide, so they're a little bit tall. So how do you prevent them from falling over when baking? That's always a key. And just take the palm of your hand, just gonna kind of smush it down ever so slightly. It's gonna encourage them to kind of stay in place for us there. Three by three is what we're looking for. And again, these are gonna grow together as we're baking them. So that keeps them really nice and moist. If you like a little bit crispier cinnamon roll, a little bit more texture, you just put them on a larger sheet pan, space them about two and a half inches apart and then proof them like this. But these are looking pretty good. If you don't have this quarter size sheet pan, they're about a nine by nine inch square pan works as well. So we're just gonna cover this proof this and this could take a wide range of time it could be anywhere from hour and a half to two and a half hours again depending on how warm your kitchen is so you just want to give it plenty of patience here keep it well covered and these are going to double in size and that's how we know we're finished and ready to bake these here so we'll just cover these proof them and then we'll get ready for the cream cheese frosting with our cinnamon rolls it's going to take about an hour to proof here they'll quickly proof compared to the loaf. That one's gonna take a little bit longer to proof just because it's a larger structure there. These are a little bit smaller, so they're gonna proof a little bit quicker there. Just with your proofing, you have a couple options. One of my favorite is take a really large unscented garbage bag and put the whole loaf in there. That way it keeps it from drying out there. If you've got a home oven that has a proofing feature, you can use that. Just wanna be careful that it's not too hot. So what I like to do if I have that feature, I'll cut it on let it warm up and then cut it off because a lot of home ovens that feature is a little bit high for our dough so it can actually damage our yeast there something else to consider if you're proofing it in your oven you want to keep it covered or you want to keep a little pan of water in the bottom there because in a commercial kitchen we have a proof box that not only contributes temperature but also humidity and the home oven is just going to add a temperature not humidity so if you just put the loaves in like this it could dry off and that's going to really affect the quality of our loaf it's not going to expand like we want it to so if you do put it in there again just a little covering there um, and then you can also put a little bit of water in the bottom in like a large uh, Pan. It can be either cast iron, it can be a sheet pan, whatever you've got on hand with a little warm water just to add a little bit of moisture to your oven there. What you do want to avoid if you do proof them at home and don't have an enclosed environment, if you put plastic, you want to spray that plastic wrap with a little bit of pan spray because the worst thing in the world is to cover your loaf and then it stick to your buns and then you pull it off and they deflate. That's the worst thing to happen there. So if you do go that route, just be sure to give it a mist of pan spray there. So our cinnamon buns, you can see, they've pretty much doubled in size. We're actually gonna proof these a little bit more than we're gonna proof our loaf pan, which we'll see in a little bit, because we're not gonna score or cut our loaves. These are just gonna grow as they are. But you can see they're really, really puffy here all the way to the center there. So give these plenty of time as well. When we poke these, it's gonna just kind of spring back slowly. So you can see these are really nice and puffy. They're gonna spring back really nice and slowly there. If they come back really quickly, they, like they basically bounce back, give it a little bit more time to proof. For a really light cinnamon roll, you really wanna give it enough proofing time there. So we're gonna bake these 
about 300 Fahrenheit in our oven there. I like a pretty light color on my cinnamon rolls, but if you want a little crispy or a little bit more color, just make it a little bit hotter. About 325, 350 will work as well. And these are gonna take about 25 minutes to bake. Cinnamon rolls are ready. Nice light gold and brown color is what we're looking for there. Then when you press them, should spring back on you there. If they just kind of concave in, means it's doughy underneath and needs a little bit more time. But once they start to get that brown color, you want to keep an eye on them because cinnamon rolls can start to get dry just because they're spaced out here. So we've got our cream cheese frosting here. I like to use a scoop here just to deposit it on the top there. You could do it freestyle with a spoon. You could use a pastry bag there. Um, but I just like to use this is pretty quick and easy there we're just gonna put filling on top here we want to do it while it's still warm you can see sliding right off that's gonna really help it to adhere to the inside of our roll get all of those nooks and crannies there and that's really gonna be a delicious cinnamon bun there so once we've got filling on all of ours we're just going to take a spatula here kind of give it a little bit of encouragement to get in those nooks and crannies there everybody gets a little bit of the frost in there started to go one way or the other just fine there cinnamon rolls are meant to be a little bit messy a little bit rustic there it's all about the flavor at the end of the day so just spread it along all the way across until all of our buns here are covered Took a little bit of time, but we're finally there. We've got both of our loaves done. And we actually only made one dough, if you'll remember. Just that simple dough. We've got one loaf and we've got some really delicious cinnamon buns here. So bread's really versatile and that's what I love so much about it. You have one dough, you can really change it up. This could easily be vegan if you wanted to. There you can change up the fillings with your cinnamon rolls and then you can just really wow your guests. So really hope you enjoyed this one. Join us for next episode. We're going to make a delicious focaccia that you may or may not have heard of, but trust me, by the time we're done with this next episode, you'll be making it day after day after day. It's just that good.